Hey everybody, Ted Forbes here and welcome back to the Art of Photography. In the last video we talked a little bit about Roloflex and I had some people ask me if I could talk about the Kiev 88 once again. The Kiev 88 is probably my biggest love-hate medium format camera. Um, the significance of the Kiev 88 is you can get these for a fraction of the price of what it costs you to get into a expensive Hasselblad system, but it does come with some caveats. I have mentioned this camera on the show before, it's been a long time, so I thought it'd be fun to do a deeper dive on this, uh, tear it down and I'll show you all the things about the Kia V88 and what you can expect out of something like this and also address if this is something I would actually buy again today if I were looking at getting one for the first time. So come on over and let's take a look at the Kia V88. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Kia V88 and I want to show you mine and I want to break this down. I'm going to talk about some of the pros and some of the cons because there are a lot of cons here but I want to talk about this and at the end of the video I'll talk about whether or not this is something I would actually purchase if I were to do it all over again. Uh, the Kia V88 is a very cheap uh, way to get into a modular medium format system of photography and the Kia V88 when these were designed it was essentially a copy or a clone of the Hasselblad 1000F which was an early model Hasselblad uh, that came out and and I think the earliest uh, iterations of this camera, it was originally known as the Salou, or I believe is how you pronounce it, I don't know if it's a French pronunciation or not, but the Salou, and then later on they changed the name to the Kiev 80, and then now we have the Kiev 88. And the Kiev 88 is an interesting camera because there are, it's, it's simple enough to where there's been some third party uh, modifications that are available for the camera and I'll talk about some of those no most notably from a company called Hardably. They actually stopped producing these. I think the factory closed down. It was 2009 I believe. And so there are no new Kia of 88s being made. However some of the third party sellers still have access to them and will still do modifications and you can get into those systems as well. And I do want to talk about those a little bit uh, and see if that's really worth it as well. But let's, let's uh, look at the Kia of 88 first. And so as I mentioned this is a probably the easiest and the cheapest way to get into a modular medium format system. So by modular I mean you have you know options in as far as lenses go. I'll talk about some other lenses in a second. And there are a lot of lenses available. Everything from a couple zoom lenses to some really long telephotos to um, there's a wide here that I've got that's a 45 millimeter I believe. This is the mirror. Uh, yeah it's a 45 millimeter which is okay. And then there's a fish eye that's available as well. And so you do have um, you know a suite of lenses that will work with this camera. And then also you have interchangeable backs and what that means is I can take the backs off and I have several of these and so I can load one with black and white film, one with color film and I can actually switch them between shots which is really nice. And so all this stuff is removable. The other thing that you have options for is the, um, is the viewfinder here. This is the standard viewfinder that comes with the Kia V88. There is a spot prism TTL meter which means through the lens. So you can do through the lens metering and you slide this off, put that one on. I had one uh, somewhere and I stopped using it. It was way more trouble than it was worth. Um, the only thing that's kind of nice is if you want a viewfinder to look through, you can certainly use that. Uh, it had a little, you took a battery and there was a little knob on the side and you would basically turn that until a light turns green on the inside of the, the viewfinder. You knew that that was exposure and then you'd look over on the side and it would give you kind of the the exposure value and what you wanted to use for shutter speed and, and but it was all based on spot and so really for my uses it was just easier to use an external meter and I liked having uh, the standard uh, view, viewfinder on here so anyway but that's essentially what all is interchangeable on here so if you're going to take off and put on the back one thing you don't want to do a lot of people do is just smack these back on you actually want to move that and then this is the the release don't 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 smack it because you're going to risk bending and damaging things that's one thing the first con I'll talk about is that the quality control uh, with the Kiev 88 is all over the place. So you might have a decent camera um, that you've gotten lucky with and you might have a lemon. And my first Kiev 88 was actually a lemon. And uh, at one point the shutter just locked up on me and never released. And so this is actually the second Kiev 88 that, that I've owned. And uh, anyway, um, the, the controls on here are pretty straightforward. Once you have the, the film back on, there is a dark slide and the shutter will not release with the dark slide in. It's just a safety measure. And like on the Hasselblads, technically you shouldn't be able to release this. Yeah, and mine's locked uh, my old camera it would still release but anyway it keeps you from pulling the back off if the dark slides off and exposing your film so anyway you want to remove the dark slide 
On the front, it's pretty basic. You've got your shutter button uh, for firing here. Uh, you can focus the lens here, adjust the aperture on the collar here as well. And uh, then the shutter speed is adjusted on this dial over here. And this is something that's really important to understand about the Kia of 88 if you have one, is don't ever uh, move the shutter speed without cocking it first. So I'm, I'm actually advanced the next frame. So the, the, a lot of people will recommend that after you take a picture, just go ahead and advance it because if you, much like on old rangefinder cameras, you risk damaging the mechanism in here. So this one is, is cocked, so I can change it. And you don't have a whole ton of selection with shutter speeds. You just pull this out and bring it to the next shutter speed. So 125, 250, 510, 1000. Um, I've also seen people say that you really only want to turn this clockwise and it's just a good habit to get into. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. I have 60 over here and then I get down to my flash sync speed which is 30 and then I can actually take it down slower than that and do a bulb. Now here's the deal with the Kia of 88 uh, is that when you're using this for photography it has some pretty severe limitations on here and a lot of the third parties I was talking about earlier have made improvements on this and so you can actually get around some of the issues but I think the biggest issue of all that I had on this camera when I was using this a lot uh, was the the mirror slap up and essentially what happens is inside the body there's two things that are going on I want to show you there is a mirror in there and that's how the whole SLR um, aspect of this works and so you're looking at a reflection and when you when you snap the picture the mirror will flap up and then you have this big metallic shutter curtain here which is kind of a drag as well there's a lot of big mechanical parts on here and so this flips over you take the image as such and then you can advance the frame and you can see it's pretty loud even uh, this is not a quiet inconspicuous camera at all you're gonna make some noise with this so when I let's go ahead and I'm gonna get a slower shutter speed so you can see it but yeah, the mirror goes up, the cur curtain opens, and the curtain closes, and that's how the, the exposure works. So the problem with the mirror slap up is that mirror will actually hit the camera. And if you're on a slow shutter speed, I'll, I have an image that, that you can see this on in this portrait. If you kind of look in the eyes, you see a little bit of that blur. And that's because I was flash syncing this at 30. And yeah, and I had mirror slap up. And it, it really does become a little bit of, of a burden. Um, one of the modifications that you'll see some of these companies do, like Hard of Lie, is, is they will have a mirror lockup switch. So you can actually lock the mirror up. Up like you can on a Hasselblad. So when you take the image, theoretically you don't get the mirror slap, but the shutter curtain is so massive. I, I've never used that modification, so I can't speak to how well that would work or not, but that is one nice thing about the Hard of Lie uh, stuff as well as others is that it is pretty easy to modify these with a, with a mirror lockup switch. So that's basically what you're looking at here. The other thing that, um, that third party um, manufacturers will do on this, or distributors, um, is they will actually uh, change the lens mount out into what they call the CM mount. And sometimes you see those, if you're looking at for these on eBay, you'll see this is the Kia of 88 CM. And that CM basically means it's a Pentacon lens mount. So what's cool about that is then all of a sudden you have um, access to the entire Pentacon 6 lens system that came out, which I'll be honest, the lenses that Pentacon was making were heads and tails above the stuff that you're getting. These were essentially Zeiss copies and they had varying degrees of quality on those as well. Um, for instance, one of the third party lenses that I've got on here is this one. Um, it's not third party, it's one of the original lenses. Uh, this is the Mir 45 and it's a, it's a 45 degree, um, uh, it's 45 millimeter focal length on this and the depth of field or excuse me the field of view is going to be a little bit different on this because you have a square format but it's probably most like a 28 or a 24 millimeter lens on a 35 millimeter camera or full frame digital camera something of that nature um, this is the sharpness is sort of there on here the out of focus areas uh, look terrible and it's just not the greatest lens in the world it's okay and you know like I said the whole point of getting into a key of 88 system on here is because it's a cheap way to get into doing medium format in a modular system. So there are some trade-offs in that. Um, you're just going to have to deal with a little bit poorer quality. You might have to replace a body here or there along the way, maybe even a lens sometimes. So there is that trade-off. There is kind of a maintenance and an upkeep fee over the years with these. Um, they're just not going to be built to last, which is a little bit unfortunate. You know, with all that being said, um, you know, with what your options are in terms of medium format, you know, the Kia of 88 is that popular choice if you want to get in there really cheap. The Pentacon 6 is a similar system, uh, maybe a little less modular because you don't have the back removal, but you could buy a Kia of 88 CM body. Again, it's about $250 there, so you're starting to add up the money um, if you really want that modular system. And my feeling was always like, well, if I can just save the extra money and buy a Hasselblad, 
maybe that's really the way to go on this. So it's gonna be up to you what your budget is like, what you're willing to spend, how long you're willing to save. Because you could also argue, and I'm definitely a proponent of this, you know, if you're waiting to get a camera and save your money, well, that's time that you're not getting photographs. So get what you can afford and get better and just take it as it comes. The Kia of 88 is certainly good for getting into that. One other thing that I wanna mention about the Kia of 88 um, on a personal note, for me is because, you know, I could not afford a Hasselblad um, and so I got into the Kia of 88 system back in the day. Since then, I've collected some other cameras, some TLRs and, and, and uh, other types of medium format cameras. Personally, I think that even TLRs are pretty much a better bang for the buck if you're going to get a nice one. You know, you don't have that modular quality to it. You can't really change the lenses unless you've got the Mamiya C3 series, um, but you can't change the backs on. There, there are some limitations uh, on most TLRs as well. So this really is the best system for that. Now with all of these cameras, you know, you're not spending money on a Hasselblad system. So there's going to be some limitations and some things you have to work around. For instance, that mirror slap is a big one. And you're going to have to understand, you know, in, in taking exposures, how you can work around that. One thing for me when I was doing some portraits and actually it worked really well when I was doing still life stuff where nothing moves is actually go ahead and use longer exposures. So any shake does not really matter in the overall sharpness in the end. But one thing that's really interesting about that is I learned a lot about photography when I was having to work around things. And when something would show up in an image, what quite right you know yeah you do blow a couple images here and there learning that stuff but you really do learn it and I think way more so than you do on modern digital cameras where everything is kind of provided for you in auto mode and you don't have a lot of these issues you really don't think about the act of taking a picture the same way you do when you have gear with a lot of limitations on here um, I'll say this about the Kia of 88 you will work very hard to get great images out of here and they're usually worth it uh, the contrast particularly on the standard 8 millimeter lens um, is fine and it looks great uh, they have some portrait length lenses too um, you do have threaded lenses so you can use filters with these I've used macro filters before another um, thing that I've got here is a, is a doubler and I remember when I was doing some portraits with this one of the tricks I used to do because of the close focusing on here is you can actually put on the doubler and there's two ways of doing this the first thing you can do is just the old ghetto trick with macros where you just flip the lens around and hold it up next to the camera and try not to get any lens flare that's one way of doing this the other way of doing it is if you need to get a little bit more length on here is to use the doubler and so there's some fun things like this that you can play around and try um, but it's just you know, it, it's, it's a big, heavy-duty metal system here, and that's kind of how it works. So if you wanted to flip that around, you can even get some effects going that way. But it's a lot of fun to do. Um, at the time of my life where I was using this camera a lot, I learned a lot from it. I really enjoyed it. And for me, it was exactly that. It was a foray into medium format without a lot of the cost involved. And, you know, do I think it's worth it? Absolutely, on those terms, because you're going to get into a whole system for well under $500, probably less than that. I, you know, I don't know what the current... Uh, prices on eBay and, and some of the used markets are like on that. But you know, the, the other big deal that you're going to have to, to deal with on this is just the quality control issue. You might get a lemon and that's just how how the game works on this stuff. Um, would I do it again today? Yeah, if I were at that same point in my life where I was getting into medium format, didn't have a lot of money, I still had a lot to learn at that time about just actually making exposures and taking pictures, I'd do it again because I, I, all that stuff that I got out of it was really worth it to me. Would I do it now? Probably not. Um, just because I'm not, I, I'm not willing to deal with the, the uh, the, the inconveniences that come with the Kia of 88 in the same way that I was probably used to. I think now when I shoot medium format, I do have a, a Hasselblad 503 and, and an 8 millimeter lens, and I'll use that. Um, you can rent lenses for those. There are other ways around it, or even using my TLRs, like I was talking about the Roloflex in the last video. Um, I personally think that's a better value than this, just in terms of the build quality, the design, the functionality, and you don't have the mirror slap with it and all those things. So anyway, so that in a nutshell is the Kia of 88, and uh, check them out. Uh, you can find them on eBay. I'll I'll list some links in the show notes for resources if you're interested in reading more about the Kiev 88. And until next time, this has been another episode of The Art of Photography. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to like it and share it with your friends. And as always, subscribe for more videos. We're putting out a ton of stuff these days, and I'm doing a bunch of more stuff on cameras, and we're going to get into some film stuff. We still have the photo history stuff that we're doing at least once a week. So there's a lot of stuff coming up, so subscribe so you'll be up on all the latest and greatest. Until the next episode, I'll see you later.